It's October 2022, and Adobe Lightroom Classic version 12 has added in some new options to their already powerful masking tools. Let's take a look. The new masking options, if you haven't already seen since version 11, are under a new masking menu. And in previous versions, you were always able to select things like the subject and the background in order to be able to do particular changes to certain masks within an image. For example, I could click on subject and the AI was powerful enough to recognize in a shot what the subject was and it would create a mask. Now, much like Adobe Photoshop, these masks could be layered and we could add in additional layers to be able to adjust just parts of the images working on the subject or the sky or the background. For example, I'll click on background here and I can switch between working on just the subject or just the background. You can also go ahead and do linear or radial masks. For example, if I wanted to go ahead and pick just part of an image to work on, I could do that with a layer mask as well. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and rename each of these. So for example, if I wanted to call this one just my sun mask and I wanted to call this one my background mask, I certainly could do that. Since I'm gonna be flattening this image and exporting it right away, I don't need to spend the time doing that. Now what they've added in this new version is actually very, very powerful. It's AI content aware tools that allow us to be able to work on just parts of an image. Let's go ahead and click on select people, which is the new option. And immediately you can see that this version of Lightroom Classic can detect the different people in the shot. If you're looking at it and saying it's not perfect, don't worry about that. We're going to come back to that in a second. But it can mask off individual people to work on somebody who might be in shadow or somebody who might need to get warmed up or adjust skin tones. Really great option to fine tune an image. Let's go by selecting this uh, boy here first. And what you'll see is as soon as I pick on him, I can start adjusting individual parts of just the body, the lips, the hair, and as more things are present in the shot, you'll actually get to see more options here. I could also work on multiple people at the same time if I wanted to. I could add a person in if I had two or three people in a shot that I wanted to adjust the same way. I could add them to the mask. Now say for example I want to work just on his skin. I could pick just his face skin or I could also pick his body skin as well. And as you're going to see right here, it's not perfectly set for picking just his skin. You can see there's a little bit of mom's hand here and it's missing part of its leg. But don't worry, we're going to go ahead and adjust that. I'm going to click Create Mask. And now within that mask, I can add and subtract individual parts to it. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract away mom's hand. And I'm just going to use like I always have done in the past, just use my brush tool. Get that up to size here and just kind of erase away mom's hand here so that it's not part of his skin mask. Now the new part is, uh, that's been added in is that objects can be added. And I'm gonna consider the part of his leg here an object. It works the same if it was like uh, a violin or, or something else um, that would be part of a shot. I can select that. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint over part of his leg here. And I don't have to be perfect on it, but the AI software should be intelligent enough to just say, all right, that is an object that's unique to the background and add that into the mask. And that's it. In this particular mask here, which I can, if I want to, just for my purposes here, I'm just going to rename boy, but his skin from his arm, not mom's hand, and his leg have been perfectly selected onto this shot. And now I can make individual corrections or adjustments to that particular mask. I can adjust the exposure if I want to. I can adjust shadows if I want to go ahead and do that, which is really prominent down here. In fact, I could make another mask where I pick just his leg here. If I wanted to click and do an object mask and pick just his leg and make additional adjustments on that, I can do that as well. So now I can go ahead and reduce shadows even further here or individually as opposed to the rest of his skin. All these other layer masks here are working just like layers in Photoshop. So if I wanted to warm up this and add a little bit more sunlight coming through, I could certainly do that. If I wanted to adjust the background and add just a little bit more contrast, I could. If I wanted to work on just the subject and brighten or cool them, I can do that. All your usual adjustments that you can do on the whole image now can be done on these individual mask layers. The really cool part is being able to pick individual people now, so incredibly powerful there. Now there's some more things you can do uh, with the masking tools. I'm going to pick another image over here, and this particular shot didn't have uh, a really pretty sky. Now you could go into Photoshop and use the sky replacement tool, but let's say I just want to add a little bit of color to that. Now I could go into my masks, and I could say pick the sky and make an adjustment. You could apply a brush to it, you could apply a color to it, but Adobe has also given us some of these adaptive presets over here, which allows us to be able to not only in one step 
add the mask, but then also add the effect to it. So if I want just a little bit of a bluer sky here in this negative space, I could go over to their new adaptive sky preset blue drama, click on that, and it's going to go ahead and pick just the sky as a mask, and then give it the coloration that I want to. I can add more blue or less in order to just fine tune it to my own preferences on the shot and get a, a much better looking image here instead of just a, a boring gray sky on this shot. One more thing that's really cool in this new version is the fact that there is finally now a content aware tool. So in the past, if I wanted to go ahead and remove an object, what I'd have to do is I could go in and I could either heal it away or clone it out, which wasn't always perfect. Content aware is a little bit smarter than both of those tools. And just like before, I'm gonna paint around and grab an object and I can completely remove it from an image. It's not as powerful as the delete and fill selection tool that's available now in Photoshop version 24, but it's a very good tool that I think is gonna work on probably 75 to maybe even 90% of your images. I definitely think that as you're going ahead and trying to mask off subjects and pick people uh, and be able to do individual edits on them, definitely recommend this version to upgrade. Again, just like always, keep both versions on your computer. I would always work on a copy of your catalog if that's the way that you're operating on, just so that you don't have any destructive edits on this. Thanks for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more content, don't forget to click like and subscribe. See you next time.